Hey everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Artist Empire here, and in today's fun scroll saw project video, I have another amazing Halloween design by Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts and Fox Chapel Publishing. I've already got all the patterns printed out and attached to our material with clear packing tape. And in this project, we're going to use two pieces of three quarter inch pine that I had over in the scrap bin. And the design in question is some nice Halloween jack o' lanterns. They each have a unique face there. They've got the vines that connect them and all. And they're going to go on a base here that we're going to cut out. And you can put this on the base center to where it'll be more balanced, but we're going to put it kind of off-center because we're going to put some tea lights behind it to where the jack o lanterns will have an eerie and creepy glow for Halloween. So, really, really neat. I'm excited to cut this project out. Again, it come from a past issue of Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts magazine, and I do not have the magazine, but I do have these new amazing discs that Fox Chapel Publishing offers. These are loaded with back issues of Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts magazine. They are loaded in PDF format where you can go and browse everything. I did print out the page the article was on and it was on page 66 of the fall 2006 magazine so that was what was loaded on this disc and you guys know I don't stock color ink because I just print out patterns but here is how the article looks as well as a list of materials you may need the pattern is designed by Laura S. Irish and the one here cut if it was in color and you could see it clearly was cut by John Martin so really really neat really excited about this and I love this archiving capability that Fox Chapel Publishing and Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts offers to where you can quickly find and browse everything but since everything is prepared let's move the camera so we can draw all the pilot holes so we can start scrolling and over here on the workbench I'm taking my Seiko scrollers drill and drilling out all of the pilot holes for internal cuts and you will see that I have a backer board behind what will be the scroll work to prevent blowout of the pilot holes this just keeps them nice and clean so when we're over here at the scroll saw they can easily be identified on the reverse side of the scroll work. Over here at the scroll saw I am using a number 5 ultra reverse tooth blade for all of the scrolling on this project and it will cut through the 3 quarter inch pine exceptionally well with minimal chip out and that's always good when it comes time for sanding and finishing beginning with some of the smaller interior cuts here and I know with a project like this with all of these small interior cuts it can be monotonous and sometimes it feels like it takes longer to thread the blade and retention it and change everything out than it does to do the actual cut but all of these small little details we're doing here will add up to make a beautiful image once all of the scrolling is complete I want to once again thank Fox Chapel Publishing for supplying me with those archival CDs of past issues of Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts Magazine. They are going to be a huge asset out here in the workshop to where I can just pull from the PDF files and print out patterns and just go with those instead of having to go back and look through magazines. So thank you guys for that. I truly appreciate it. I thank pumpkins and jack-o-lanterns are the quintessential icons of the Halloween season of course everyone has pumpkin spice everything this time of year with it being fall and everything but I've always loved the creativity and seeing the different designs people can come up with for pumpkin carving designs and stencils and all and for anyone who's never scroll sawed before Pumpkin carving stencils are a great resource for easy scroll saw patterns if you're just getting into the scroll saw hobby. If you guys like what you're seeing, I would highly encourage you to subscribe to my channel and also follow me across all my social medias under the Artisan Pirate name. I'd really appreciate the support. Doing the final internal cuts here, which is the biggest jack-o-lantern's face, the one in the center here. And as always, I took my time and let the blade do the work. And all in all, it took me around 30 minutes to scroll him out from start to finish. Not a very complicated pattern at all. Now that all the interior cuts is done, I'm going to quickly cut out the base here, which is also a piece of 3 quarter inch pine. And then we will begin here to release the actual scroll work. 
doing that final long outside perimeter cut which will release the piece from the waste wood. But again, just taking my time and letting the blade do the work. Once we come back around the top here, all of the scroll work will be done on this project. And over here at the workbench, we can remove the pieces from the waste wood and get a visual of what the final project is going to look like with the tea lights added and everything. But now we can head on to sanding with 180 grit cling spore sandpaper and my palm sander here. And I will use small circular motions to sand the front and back of both pieces. And then we can move to assembly, which is just gluing the pumpkins onto the base. Again, I'm gonna glue it off center. And I'm gonna use some medium grade CA glue and activator and once I satisfied where it was I sprayed the activator on it and I set it aside to dry to make sure the glue was cured for around five minutes and then it was time to apply a finish and I chose Minwax wood stain and I made sure to saturate the whole piece and I wiped off all the excess with a piece of scrap t-shirt material and hung it on a hook to dry for around an hour and then it was time to finish it with several coats of Rust-Oleum cleared gloss. And after this dried, we could get a preview of what it's going to look like with the little tea lights in it. They just sit on the back of the little shelf there. And I'll quickly turn out the light so you guys can see the eerie glow. And the project was complete. And here we have the completed Halloween jack-o'-lantern tea light piece cut out completely on the scroll saw and he finished up amazingly well. Thank you Laura Irish for an amazing design from a previous issue of Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts Magazine by Fox Chapel Publishing. Again the issue in question was fall 2006 so it's a very old pattern and it came out amazingly well and I want to also thank Fox Chapel Publishing for supplying me with the archival disc of previous patterns and magazines. Really really cool and I thank you guys for that. It took me around 30 minutes to scroll this piece out. It's not a very complicated pattern. Most of of the time you're going to have in a design like this is all of these little curves here that help separate and break up the three individual jack-o'-lanterns and I like how all three of them have their own individual characteristics and looks like their own personalities with the different faces. I like how all of the vines and the stems here tie all three of them together and again I glued this piece off center on the base. You totally have the option of putting it dead center on the base for a more symmetrical look but I wanted to put some electronic tea lights behind it to where it can be lit up in the window. We are right at Halloween's doorstep so I'm thankful I got this done in time to put in the window for Halloween night and it's going to be with me for years to come to where I can display it every year. I'll just have to pack it away and you can put a brighter light source behind this like an LED light strip or something like that. I would just not want anyone to put actual tea lights behind it because with actual flame and wood that's not a good mix and I hope you guys can understand and appreciate that and there's several ways to also finish a project like this. I just went with my rustic way of finishing things over here on the channel and that was the Minwax wood stain and the Rust-Oleum clear gloss and it still came out great and the grain pops and everything and that clear gloss just gives it protection again for years to come. You could paint this, you could cut it out of hardwood. This was cut out of three quarter inch pine that I had in the scrap bin and a lot of people don't like to use pine because it can be brittle and it can dent easily and break off and everything. I just took my time and kept a sharp blade in the scroll saw and let the blade do the work as always. But really, really neat. You could also put a piece of parchment paper back here behind the light to really give it an eerie glow and I might do that off camera, I'm not sure yet. But there's a lot of ways to use a pattern like this. Of course, you could enlarge him and put him out in the yard. That's also another versatile way of using scroll saw patterns. I do again want to really thank 
Fox Chapel Publishing for supplying me with all of their archival CDs of previous issues of Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts Magazine. I think these are a huge asset to anyone in the Scroll Saw world that wants to be able to just sit and browse these on maybe their tablet or on a plane, you know, while they're traveling or on a train or anything, because all of the issues on here are in PDF format to where you can drag these over onto a laptop or over onto a tablet to browse at your leisure without having to keep up with the actual physical copy of the magazine and these take up way less space I will leave a link down in the description box below where the archival CDs can be picked up and the pattern in question we've done here today came from CD2 of Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts by Fox Chapel Publishing. So thank you again for that, guys. You are totally amazing, and I really appreciate everything you're helping me with out here in the workshop. But I had a lot of fun in today's project, and I hope you guys like watching me make this. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel, and also follow me across all my social medias under the Artisan Pirate name. As always, links to all my social medias, as well as ways to contact me, will always be linked down in the description box below these videos. That's about all for this one, and remember, guys, if I can make it or do it, so can you. I'm the Artisan Pirate. Take care. Happy Halloween, and I'll see you guys real soon.